Okay, lecture six is about the electrophoresis analysis. Electrophoresis, I think most of you have done some hands-on exper experiments on using electrophoresis, especially DNS agarose gel electrophoresis, right? If you have done it, you would still remember what happened at the end of the process. So you will, will be able to uh, separate out DNA molecules and based on their size difference, right? So basically electrophoresis is a technique where you can separate out biological molecules based on their sizes. So you can consider it as a bioseparation technique, okay? Electrophoresis is a separation of charged molecules, especially because they'll have to be separated out on an electric current. So, you know, negatively charged molecule will migrate from uh, the negative pole to the positive pole. Using that migration pattern, you separate out your molecule based on their sizes. That's how it works, right? So often used in determining the length of DNA fragment, length or size of DNA fragment, right? Kilobase pair, base pair, because depends on the sizes, the migration speed would be different. Okay, and then molecular weight of proteins. Okay, proteins, their weights are measured in Dalton, kilodalton. Okay, again, just like DNA RNA molecules, protein molecules can get separated on an electric current. Okay, uh, for that, you have to uh, make proteins charged with some detergent called SDS. Then they will be all negatively charged and they will migrate towards the positive charged pole. And then you can compare their migration speed based on their sizes. And then uh, you can also use this technique to separate out proteins based on their charge difference. We call the process called isoelectric point or isoelectric focusing. Okay, As you know, protein molecules have different amino acids in them. Based on their amino acids make up, they may have different charge. Okay, So isoelectric point means a pH value, a certain pH value where your protein will be net negative, net neutral. Okay, so normally protein molecules will migrate towards that pH point, try to be settled at that point. So you can separate out your protein molecules based on their charge difference. And then purity of an isolated protein can be uh, determined by looking at how many proteins you can find from your electrophoresis gel. Okay, if there's only single band, single dot, yes, there's only single protein. But if there are multiple band, multiple dot, there may be multiple proteins that are not in the equal size, right? So basically, within a electric current from negative to positive, you will have your molecules migrate. Okay, so negatively charged molecules will migrate towards the positive charged side. Okay, so they'll be separated out within a given time because the the electric electrons will migrate and your molecules will migrate towards uh, the opposite side. Okay, so that can be done if your molecules are uniformly charged. Maybe if they are all negatively charged, they will migrate towards the opposite pole, same direction. But what if your molecules have different charges? Okay, and they might migrate uh, to maybe positive charge if they are negatively charged. If they are uh, negatively charged, then they will uh, migrate to positive charge. If they are positive charged, they will migrate uh, negative charge. So their migration direction may be different. So that's what electric uh, focusing uh, means. So your protein may be negatively, possibly uh, charged. So they may be m moving towards the opposite direction. Okay. It's a picture of a gel. Okay. You probably have seen this, and that's agarose gel. Of course, with the you know sample loading die that showed you location, tentative location of your DNA, but they they are not binding with the DNA closely. But the dye molecule that's binding with the DNA is a fluorescent dye called ethylene bromide. So it's uh, these molecules. So if you shine the UV light out, that's a UV light box, you will see your DNA molecules are uh, stained with bright orange colors. That's the ethylene bromide sticking with your DNA. Yes, you can visualize DNA samples. So for example, uh, there are multiple DNA separated out on one sample loading gel. And this one has only one. Okay, this one is a multiple as well. So that's what I mean by the separation of molecules based on sizes. So if the gel study from that direction to that direction, how can you tell? Because that's a sample loading wells. So from that point, they migrate towards that side, right? So <clears throat> since they move from that side to that side, so that may be the smallest, then maybe the largest. Okay. 
Agrostro electrophoresis, like I said, DNA uh, electrophoresis analysis will use agarose gel as a medium, okay, because agarose gel is non-toxic, it's relatively cheaper and user-friendly. So, and then you can control its concentration easily by mixing up certain amount of agarose uh, to create the gel. It's just like a gel though you can make as your dessert, okay. So it's very effective in separating out DNA molecules between 0.5 and 25 kilobase pair sizes. Okay, and agarose you can buy it as a, a pure powder, and that powder is well dissolved in water-based buffer TATPE, and then you can heat them up because they don't get mixed well. Uh, otherwise, you heat it. You have to heat it up to melt the agarose powders, and then they mix well with the water. And then they, the melted agarose will be poured into a gel cast mold uh, with uh, the wells uh, made by the uh, teeth comb, and then you can set up the agarose once it's solidified, right? So basically, you know, the higher the agarose percentage is, you will make uh, more. Um, I guess closed network of agarose, so the holes will be smaller. Okay, but if you have a low agarose percentage gel, you know, since agarose molecules are not that many, you your pore size will be larger. Okay, so that will be the difference. So typically, you make like 0.5 percent gel, all the way up to 1.5 percent gel. Okay, so it depends on what size DNA molecules you're going to separate it out. Okay, so a lower percentage gel, like I said, will give you bigger pores in them, okay? Because there's less agarose molecules making very uh, loose network, so the pore size will be large. If you have large pore sizes, then uh, large DNA molecules will migrate through those large holes fairly well, okay? So the large molecules will be well separated. Otherwise, but on the other side, 1.5% gel, there's a lot of agarose, about three times more agarose there. So the network will be very close to each other, so the holes will be very small. So that agarose gel will be better to separate out smaller DNA molecules between 3 and 0.2 kilobase pair. Okay, see the difference? So you can choose a certain percentage agarose gel based on the size of DNA molecules you're going to separate them out. Okay? And then when you do an electrophoresis using an agarose gel, okay, so that agarose gel should be made with agarose powder that's dissolved in certain buffer. What is the buffer? Normally TAE, TPE, or TB. There are three different kinds. Okay, they are very very similar because TRIS is the buffer that controls the pH change, as we already learned. E comes from EDTA. That's a metal chelator. Okay, then what's in the middle? is the acid that is used to adjust the pH of the trees. Did you use acidic acid or did you use phosphate acid or did you use boric acid? Depends on what acid you use. You could you make TAE, TPE or TBE buffer. Okay, but they are all similar. Okay, the only difference is TBE buffer is not very good because it can damage the DNA. Okay, so if you want to retrieve your DNA at the end of the agarose electrophoresis, then you should not use TBE buffer. You should use instead TAE or TPE. Okay, so TAE is kind of common universal buffer, so people tend to use TAE a lot. Okay, so you you mix agarose powder with TAE buffer to make a gel. You melt it and put it in a gel cast uh, as a melt, melted solution, and then you make the gel, right? And then once gel is set, solidified. And you get the gel out, put it in a chamber, electrophoresis chamber, and a chamber, and then the chamber will be filled with the same buffer because this buffer has uh, electrolytes in them, so the electric current will go through the buffer. Okay, and you need to prepare your DNA uh, samples uh, with something called sample loading dye. Okay, sample loading dye uh, typically has about these components: FICOL. And SDS, that's the detergent, and brown phenol blue, that's a dye uh, uh, compound dye solution, and then uh, silent silo, it's another dye in solution. Okay. So 20% FICOL. FICOL is a polycarbohydrate. Okay, it's a sugar molecule, and it's added uh, to your loading buffer because it gives a density. Okay. Why do you need density in this buffer? Because when this uh, buffer solution is added to your uh, DNA sample. Okay, that DNA sample should be 
the answer then the buffer solution itself because when your DNA is added to the well that sample should be settled down to the well not be floating away from the well right right so that's why you need to add FICO with a heavier density STS is a detergent uh, that can denature your DNA for example let's say your DNA has some kind of secondary structure uh, they stick together okay you need to disturb that secondary structure before they are loaded to the sample and then separated on the gel otherwise your DNA may show up as a much larger uh, size than uh, their original size so detergent is added for that purpose breaking up the secondary structure and these dye solution bromophenol blue and xylen xylen they give you those blue color so those are kind of indicator uh, giving you a hint where your DNA molecule may be traveling in the gel okay so you have to stop the electric current before your sample will run off from the gel right also it's easier to see uh, if they have color when you add a sample to the well okay so th those things are added in your sample loading dye solution so DNA samples are mixed with this loading buffer and then that mixture is loaded to the well of the gel okay and the gel size is important because that's gel size uh, the well size uh, because that should be big enough so your sample should be loaded into that also when you do agarose electrophoresis you also add something called size standard marker size standard marker normally those are the DNA from uh, viruses and then normally there are multiple DNA fragments with the known sizes okay and then those fragments will be separated out in your gel so since you know the, their sizes of those fragments and then their migration distance from those you can plot what standard curve so that standard curve will be used for your um, size estimation of your unknown DNA sample that's the whole purpose of adding the size standard marker in your electrophoresis okay and commonly used uh, size standard is lambda Hindi DNA so lambda is a bacteriophage lambda genomic DNA that's typically cut with some enzyme it's BST2 enzyme or Hindi3 enzyme depends on what enzyme you use there may be number of different fragments that have different sizes in there okay and then uh, the size standard that covers the good size range to be used and your sample should be within that range so these are all commercially available size standard you can buy and use from that is the lambda bacteriophage DNA cut by Hindi 3 and uh, other you know DNA markers are made with different DNA and different uh, I guess enzymes okay and when you uh, run your electric current through your gel you normally use about like 100 voltage and constant uh, voltage will be used to generate that constant movement of electron through your gel okay so based on your standard you plot something like standard curve this is a standard curve right so in this case what you, what is already given that's the size of your uh, uh, standard okay the lambda cut by maybe Hindi 3 for example it may give you eight or nine fragments with different sizes and so their sizes are given here entered as x value independent variable and then what can you determine at the end of the experiment the migration distance of those fragments right which is entered in the y, va y value so relative migration distance in centimeter okay if you plot those together you see that linear form especially if you convert that y the size of dna into maybe log form okay so you'll see a linear form from the linear uh, curve you can maybe get the equation and use the equation to solve for the size of your unknown dna after measuring and entering that migration distance of the unknown dna from your gel okay that's how you uh, you're going to use this size standard for the size estimation of your unknown sample uh, so we're going to do this lab uh, in maybe lab three or lab four i think yeah okay Ethereum bromide staining, like I said, uh, DNA itself is not visible. 